Hi, I'm Stephen McGill. I've been doing academic research in software analysis, security, and programming languages for more than 15 years. First as part of my PhD work at Carnegie Mellon, and then at other universities and industry research labs. Over the last few years, I've been getting more and more interested in the practice of software. In particular, open source development practices, how enterprises approach software, and how to best contribute to these communities by improving tools and practices, and how this all comes together uh, to generate modern software. And uh, uh, my name is Gene Kim. I've been studying high performing technology organizations for 20 years. And uh, one of the funnest things I've ever gotten to work on in my career was something called the State of DevOps Report with uh, Dr. Nicole Forsgren and uh, Jez Humble, which resulted in the Accelerate book. And uh, it was so fun to be able to take many of the things I learned there and apply it to a separate project, which I will describe in, in just a moment. So this is a reprise of a presentation that uh, Dr. Stephen McGill and I did at GitHub Universe last year. And I thought this was so relevant to the technology leadership community that I asked Stephen if uh, he'd be willing to present this again with me uh, here at DevOps Enterprise. So in terms of a problem statement, uh, back at GitHub Universe, uh, Nat Friedman, the CEO of GitHub, said that 99% of all new software projects use open source in some uh, fashion. And then <laughs> Erica Brescia, the CEO, said, uh, we are inviting thousands of developers into your code uh, when you use open source dependencies into your living room. And kind of Steve and I were in the audience and we were laughing going, is that a good thing or a bad thing, right? Uh, are they going to trash the place or are they going to help with the kitchen project? And so that's actually what we wanted to uh, understand better, uh, what practices sub, um, in, result in good security outcomes in the uh, software supply chain. So on the next slide, uh, this is just a brief thumbnail of the state of DevOps research. Over six years, we benchmarked across uh, over 36,000 respondents, really trying to understand what does high performance look like and what are the architectural practices, technical practices, and cultural norms that result in great performance. And uh, the, the punchline is that we found this, these group of IT performance metrics uh, that were dominant, deployment frequency, deployment lead time, uh, change success rate, and mean time to restore. And so the goal of uh, this study is really to understand what structures and practices correlate with exemplary outcomes, uh, such as fast time to update, fast time to mediate security vulnerabilities. And the question was, will we find a lot of the practices that we found in the State of DevOps report also applicable in open source projects? And so the amazing opportunity that came up was uh, when a couple of years ago, some friends at Phenotype reached out to me with what I thought was an amazing opportunity, which was to be able to analyze the data in uh, Maven Central, which struck me as an incredible opportunity. So for those of you who don't know, Maven uh, Central is to Java as what NPM is to JavaScript, uh, PyPy is to Python, and Gems is to Ruby. And so it is the second large, largest uh, package repository in the world. And this was especially interesting to me because my favorite programming language uh, is Clojure. And uh, it leverages all the amazing Java components uh, inside of Maven Central. So it just struck me as something I got a tremendous joy out of doing. And it was amazing to work with the team at Sonotype. And uh, it was uh, also delighted me that Steven has a particular fondness for Maven as well. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, Haskell is maybe my, my first true programming language love, but uh, <laughs> Scala as a statically typed, uh, function, mostly functional language, uh, you know, it's definitely close to my heart and being able to leverage uh, everything in the Java ecosystem, certainly amazing. So, you know, it's a, it's a great set of components, a great data set to dig into from an analysis perspective. Absolutely. And, and so this is what resulted in uh, collaborating with uh, Sonotype on the state of the software supply chain. And so we worked with uh, not just uh, Dr. Stephen McGill, uh, but Bruce Mayhew, an engineering director there, Ghazi Mahmood, uh, and Brian Fox, who was actually one of the inventors of Maven and Maven Central, uh, which was a, a, a treat beyond words. So, uh, so the, really the hypotheses that we want to focus in on were mm -hmm. these, hypothesis one. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, so we, we had a number of uh, things that we wanted to test, right? Um, we wanted to see if projects that release frequently have better outcomes, right? This is something that we see uh, in enterprise, how enterprises operate. Do we see it in open source? Uh, do projects that update dependencies more frequently, are they generally more secure? Uh, do projects with fewer dependencies stay more up to date, right? It seems like it should be easier to stay on top of things when you have fewer things to keep up with. And then are more popular projects better about staying up to date, right? These are all sort of intuitive outcomes that you would expect given our experience, our day-to-day -day <laughs> experience developing software, but do they actually hold? When you look at the data, you know, does it back these up? <laughs> and 
And so we had the opportunity to, to investigate this by digging into this Maven Central data set, which um, when I pulled these numbers, uh, it was up to 310,000, over 310,000 Java components. Um, those are, there's of course multiple versions of each component. So when you look at the actual releases, you're over 4 million different releases. And uh, a whole lot of those are associated with GitHub repos, which just gives us another uh, data source to draw on, right? We can go in and look at that metadata uh, from GitHub to learn more about those projects. Um, you know, and uh, amazingly, you know, almost 9% of those have known vulnerabilities. You know, there are vulnerabilities known against those components. And so we dug into that vulnerability data as well. And, uh, and in particular, what we focused on here was the dependency structure uh, of the components and how do they treat their dependencies? Um, how often are they upgraded when they're someone else's dependency, right? And um, this dependency structure is really complex and rich, right? When you think about all the libraries that you're pulling in and all the libraries that they're pulling in transitively and, and so on, you know, it's this huge collection of things that, you know, your application code becomes this small, tiny little bit <laughs> of the system, right? Um, and so we thought it was really valuable to look at this, the security posture of the rest of that system, right? What do you see um, in all those dependencies and transitive dependencies? And, and what should that uh, tell you in terms of how you should treat uh, the dependencies that you bring in and, and things you should consider uh, there? So yeah, if you're, if you're way down here, uh, you know, it's a small part of this uh, ecosystem. So uh, to look at this, we, we, started with, we started with all components published in, in Maven Central. Uh, we focused first on, uh, based on time. So we looked at the last five years uh, because, you know, practices change over time, development trends change over time. We wanted what we discovered to be relevant for software development as it's done today, right? And then, uh, then we looked at components that are actually 